Okay, second video where this time I'm going to actually run a, pr a little program. I'm not going to cut anything, but just to quickly demonstrate sending a program. So I have the PCDNC editor running. I'm going to load the program. This program is written in kind of a human readable form with comments and everything. This is not something that a Morisaki SL2 or SL1 would understand, but this software will strip out the stuff that the Morisaki doesn't want to see and give it to the way that the machine wants it while still leaving it the way I want it. Like I can have decimal points in here and I can put comments and not worry about using up memory. So to run the program, I go to BTR and I say send file. It opens up a new window. This is actually the BTR program. It's a separate program. I'm gonna make it full screen so I can see the whole thing. And you see the cursor at the very top. We're going to step through some of these lines manually and then I'm gonna let it finish running. So on the machine, I have a piece of material in here, but see the collet isn't tight because I haven't clamped it down. Whenever I run a program, I always check, okay, X, X and Z are zero, but I'm not clamped. So, hit the clamp. Now I have three green lights, X, Z, and the clamp chuck, all three. I always check that every time. Hit reset. If you want to be paranoid, you should know this already. Make sure your machine is at zero for X and zero for Z. If it's not, you're going to crash the machine. This doesn't talk about the G50 commands. For example, there's G50 X minus 6.1086 Z 8.71150. That is the tool offset for tool one, my roughing tool, which is, there's the roughing tool. That X, that G50 X Z offset, I calculated using an Excel spreadsheet to get that information. You have to put that in your program because the machine does not store tool offsets in the machine. All right, so I've checked my three LEDs, they're good. I know that my X and Z position, X and Z are both zero. So I know I'm not gonna crash the machine. I move this selector to tape. I'm gonna do single block and I'm gonna step through it. So every time I hit cycle start, it's gonna step through the program, one line at a time. So I just hit it three times and you see how the white line is now three lines or four lines down. So now I'll hit cycle start a few more times. Hit cycle start, hit cycle start, cycle start, cycle start, and so on. So every time I hit cycle start, every time I hit cycle start, it sends a single line of code to the machine. And that's how it's mimicking a punched tape. So if there were actually a punched tape loaded up in the machine, it would read a few lines of punch tape to load the command. And this way I'm doing true BTR from the computer. I'm not loading anything in the memory. So I'll continue cycle start. Here's the G50 command just executed. There's the G00 um, and selecting tool one. And then set the speed. And now I'm gonna hit the, this is the G97 S500 which is gonna turn the spindle on. So there's the spindle. So you see, I manually cycled, you see line N125, G97, S500, M03 to turn on the spindle. So you see how it's sitting there, the white thing is one line below the G00X minus 1.2. That command is not executed. It's loaded into the buffer because the white line is no longer on that line. That means that line is loaded in the buffer. And if we can see that if we go to here, I've gone to COM, and you see the minus 1.2 on the X, and the, minus, and the 0 0.1500 on the Z. See there, minus 1.2 on the X, and Z, 0 0.150. So now I'm actually going to hit cycle start on that. Cycle start. And it moves it out. So it just executed, it just executed that G00 line. So I'm not going to go through this for all of them, I just wanted to make that point that in the program the white line is what's about to be loaded in the machine. So right now the rough face comment would have effectively have been loaded in the machine, but PCDNC basically ignores the comment and doesn't send it. So now 
I'm going to step through a few more, few more commands. Cycle start, cycle start, cycle start, and now it's doing the face off. So now I'm going to go to single block and I'm just going to let the program run. So hit cycle start. watch the program as it's running. So the program just feeds line by line. You see the buffer light. Every time it loads a new line in the buffer, Every flash of the buffer is information going into the buffer from PCDNC. So that's the indicator you have that some, if data is getting to the machine, it's because the buffer light flashes. In fact, I'm going to go here. We can also see the numbers showing us the, des the program destination. See that point, uh, minus 1.2 was my safety spot. And then when it's done, the machine does a home. You see we've got red X, red Z. The machine is homed. And the program finished executing it to the M01, the G50X0Z0, which is the home command in the M30, and then the cursor goes right back to the top. And at this point, if I hit cycle start again, it'll run a whole new program. So that's the basic concept. And I can just hit here, cycle start, new part, cycle start, new part, over and over into this run and every time it will feed the program into the machine from this software. So I'll stop there and see if there's any questions we can figure out going forward.